The Central Bank of Nigeria has officially rolled out the applications of the e Naira, the country's first digital currency. It will also the e Naira Speed Wallet and e Naira Merchant Wallet and are currently available on Google Play Store and Apple Store, respectively. In a statement on the e Naira website, the Central Bank of Nigeria stated that interested individuals can sign up on the e Naira Speed Wallet by inserting their details as captured uh, during the Vivian enrollment. Spokesperson of the CBN of Sitanwa Sinobi over the weekend said President Muhammad Buhari will launch the digital currency today. Wasinobi also mentioned that the launch of the Inara is the high point of several years of research by the APS Bank in advancing the boundaries of payment system to make financial transactions seamless. Recall the APS Bank had postponed the unveiling of the Inara on October 1 due to activities lined up for the country's 61st independence anniversary. Meanwhile, a fintech expert Tola Fadu Bagbe has asked the government to address some of the limitations that may come with the launch of the Inara. According to Fadu Bagbe, there is the need to learn from already established platforms from dollar-denominated assets. Fadu Bagbe pointed the limit on the volume of movement of the digital Inara it's a challenge. He was speaking on a flashy program earlier in the day. The death of Inera is obviously triggered by the evolution of um, Bitcoin, of the blockchain tech itself. But if you look at if, if, you, if, you, if you look at the whole setting so far, the whole discussion, it has been that CBN has not seen cryptocurrency um, like Bitcoin as, as something revolutionary. In fact, a few weeks ago, the CBN governor said it is obvious that based on records, Nigeria is topping the list globally. Recently, we beat North America to be the, the biggest in peer-to-peer -peer trading volume globally. And um, what the governor said, the CBN governor said, was all these things are not having direct impact on the economy. And um, at the time, he said uh, the whole thing um, could be fraud because there is no impact that it has contributed into our own GDP. Uh, that being said, um, you, you, can't, you can't show away an idea that you are creating something from and um, you want that very thing to scale. Take for instance, there is no way you want to build a website and you want to you want to get rid of the internet. You want to you want to tarnish the internet and um, you want to launch a website. It doesn't work because your website can only come to reality because there is something called the internet. Uh, when it comes to volume that, that can be transacted, it's it, it is very limited. I know that CBN um, is trying to to mitigate corruption, which is um, which is which is a very um, welcome. Um, idea, but there is, there is there is so much limitation which CBN also needs to look into. Away from there now, a member of the Chartered Institute of Taxation of Nigeria, Cheson Okwande, has bemoaned the proposal for introduction of road infrastructure tax. While reacting to the Federal Inland Revenue Service proposal for the introduction of infrastructure tax on road users, Okwande highlighted the impact of the policy on the masses should the proposal be considered. Okwadi was speaking on a flashy program business breakfast earlier in the day. I consider it as uh, multiple taxation uh, which we go contrary to the view of the federal government in the area of uh, uh, ease of doing the business. Uh, but the other area I would have thought the FRA should be doing well, some of the things that it did with uh, uh, an organization uh, that was in the area of tax uh, credit for rehabilitation of uh, roads. You and I know that uh, in the month of uh, April, uh, the FIRS actually gave a tax, a tax credit to mm. uh, Dangote uh, Cement for the construction of uh, Amapa or Shukir to adjust that expressway, of which you and I have seen that that has actually gone very long. We also, they, they, they did that in the uh, local jam of Bajano, uh, uh, Kama Road for the rehabilitation of uh, that particular road. So I, I feel that the taxes that are actually being paid by individuals and organizations, which is to raise government uh, revenue, is uh, more than enough. Uh, rather than going to a tax deficit, why don't we pull from the resources? If we consider 
right? If it gets to the government post, it might be difficult to dispose out. We can use this initiative of tax credit to corporate organizations uh, to support maybe their CSR in making sure that the road infrastructure in their mm. area are put to the right perspective and mm. even the business that they are doing. And in the meantime, the federal government has disclosed that the introduction of IT project clearing programs in the past two years has saved the nation about 5.4 billion uh, naira. This was reviewed by the Minister of Communications and Digital Economy, Isop Antami, who was represented by Mr. Bitros Nabaso at the Digital 2 Nigeria Day 2021 virtual news conference held to celebrate the day in Abuja. He further said that over 600 million naira was paid as tax by ICT companies to the account of the federal government via the Federal Inland Revenue Service at the end of since 2019. The federal government has developed uh, policies to enhance Nigeria's digital sector. According to Fantami, these policies include the National Digital Economy Policy and Strategy 2020 to 2030, SIM card registration policy, national policy for the promotion of indigenous content in the Nigeria communication sector, among others. And now, economic activities improved slightly in August compared to July, according to the Central Bank of Nigeria. The CBN said in a report on its last Monetary Policy Committee meeting that the manufacturing and not manufacturing purchasing managers indices uh, showed improvement over time. Part of the MPC report said the committee noted the moderate improvement in both the manufacturing and non-manufacturing purchasing managers indices, though still below the 50 index points benchmark, showed a marked improvement over time. In August 2021, the manufacturing and non-manufacturing PMIs uh, improved to 46.9 index point apiece compared with 46.6 and 44.8 index points respectively in July 2021. Similarly, the Employment Level Index component of the manufacturing and non-manufacturing PMIs in August 2021 improved to 49.4 and 48.8 index points respectively compared with 46.5 and 47.0 index points in July. End quote. And on the international scene now, Asian stocks and U.S. futures were steady Monday as traders weighed inflation risk, China's outlook, and looming earnings report from big technology firms. Equities dipped in Japan and were mixed in China, where the central bank boosted a daily liquidity injection and officially expanded a property tax trial. Signs that it would take at least five years before authorities impose any nationwide property tax bolstered some industrial metals. S&P 500 and Nasdaq 100 features fluctuated and the 10-year U.S. Treasury yields are uh, edged up. Federal Reserve Chair Jerome Powell on Friday highlighted inflation could stay higher for longer. And in the oil market now, prices climbed on Monday, extending pre-weekend gains to heat more tier highs as global supply remained tight amid solid fuel demand in the United States and elsewhere in the world as economies pick up from coronavirus pandemic induced slumps. U.S. Wex Texas Intermediate Crude Futures rose 87 cents or about 1.0 percent to $84.63 after gaining about 1.5 percent on Friday. Brent crude futures increased 71 cents or about 0.8 percent to $86.24 a barrel following on from last Friday's 1.1 percent gain. The contract earlier hit its highest since October 2018 of $86.43 a barrel. After more than a year of depressed fuel demand, gasoline and distillate consumption is back in line with five-year averages in the United States, the world's largest fuel consumer. And that wraps it up on business news at this time. And thanks for watching. I am Frank Kowala.